now that our project's all cut out, patterned, and drilled, we're ready to move on to the cutting phase. Before we start getting too far ahead of ourselves, a couple things we need to check on the saw before we go ahead and start cutting. As you can see, first of all, my blade's not square. It's angled to the left. We'll take care of that in a second. The blade I have installed is a Flying Dutchman Ultra Reverse number three. The Ultra Reverse means that it has a few teeth on the bottom pointing up and the rest of the teeth are pointing down. You always want your teeth to point down when you're cutting any type of scroll saw project. The three or four teeth on the bottom pointing up help eliminate the fuzzies that you would normally get if you didn't have those on the back of your project. I also have the blade tensioned that's a good tension. That's the way it should sound on your saw as well. Now to get our blade set up, I'm going to use the same piece of the same block that I used on setting the drill press up. This will only take a second. I just turn my knob to get, or in your case, if you don't have this style of saw, if you have to adjust your table, you just adjust your table until the blade fits into the groove, lock it down, and now you know without a doubt your blade is perfectly 90 degrees to the table. Just like on drilling, it's extremely important and it's also more important with the thicker wood you're working. Even if you're off a quarter of a degree, the thicker the wood is, that's going to get exaggerated and your cut will come out crooked. And it's just a, a pain in the rear. Okay, so let's move on to cutting our project out. I consider scroll saw cutting to be a lot like driving a car. When you're driving a car, you never hold the steering wheel perfectly straight. You're constantly adjusting a little bit left, a little bit right, to be able to drive in a straight line due to different variables such as your alignment, road conditions, uh, road might be uneven. So you're constantly moving that steering wheel back and forth just a little bit and to the point where you probably don't even realize it anymore if you've been driving for any length of time. Scroll saw cutting is the same way. I'm going to show you here I've got a, a square lined up on the table so that I will try to steer perfectly straight into the blade and you'll see how that doesn't work if this is compared to holding the steering wheel perfectly straight and not moving it Do you see how it's come off the line just by pushing it straight into the blade? As you can see, the blade just naturally came off of the line. Has nothing to do with your saw. It's all about the blade and the way blades are made. Because they're stamped out and the blades are basically do most of the cutting on the right hand side, the blade wants to naturally draw to the right hand side. So you will never be able to cut a perfectly straight line simply by pushing the wood straight into the blade. A lot of people think their saw is broken and return their saws because they can't cut a straight line. Well again, it's it's not the saw, it's the blades. And it's just an in, it's an inherent beast with a scroll saw. So you need to learn to overcome that. In order for me to cut a straight line, I need to steer the wood into the blade. Just like I'm steering the car down the road, I need to make sure that I'm steering the wood into the blade. So here we'll make a correction to get back onto the line. And just so you know, because I'm filming this, I'm doing it with one hand. Okay, so now I'm just making little teeny tiny adjustments as I cut. I'm watching the line to make sure the line stays, or the blade stays on the line. There, and that's basically how you cut a straight line. You can go ahead and cut A all the way down and uh, do it as many times as you need until you can stay on that line and steer your wood into the blade so that you get a nice straight line. 
One thing I haven't talked about yet is the speed that we set our saw at. If you have a single speed saw, you have no choice but to leave it at the highest speed, I would assume. Some people have two speeds. If that's the case, I would run it on medium as much as possible because the higher you have your saw set, the faster, the more wear and tear it is on the saw for no real reason. And it also makes it more difficult to control your cutting. I find running at half to three quarters is usually pretty good for pretty much almost all the wood I cut. This piece of wood is three eighths inch thick. So I'm going probably five eighths right in between half and three quarters speed. So with that said, let's get to doing our first 90 degree turn. We're going to start off by cutting the straight line up and then we'll make our turn. And there's two ways to do it that I do it anyway. So we'll start by just cutting up our line. Again, we're steering it to keep it straight. A little bit of adjustment here and there. And when we get to the point of the turn, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. What you want to do is you want to spin the wood while the blade is moving and pulling your wood against the back of the blade because there's no teeth on the blade and the blade won't cut. So the front of the blade will cut as you turn into the new line or the 90. And you're holding the wood against the back of the blade while you're making the turn. like that. I'm sure you couldn't tell, but I was pulling against the back of the blade. Then we just go ahead and make our cut. And then you just spin it and back it out. The next one I'll show you is what I call is a loop. And what we'll do is we'll cut to the end and then we'll make a little loop into the waist area. This only works if you can do it into the part of the project that's not being saved, the piece you're going to throw away, the waist piece. And that looks like this. Okay, get to the end and then we just simply go into the waist area Give a nice little turn, take the little piece out, and then you can come in. Cut your straight little line. And now you've got a perfect 90 degrees there without any round over at all that you might have gotten from the first cut just by doing that little turn. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to Loosen the tension up on our blade, unhook the bottom. This is called top feeding. So now, since we have a hole to start with, just going to feed in through the top, drop the blade in, reconnect it on the bottom. Tension, tighten up our tension, and now we'll just continue to cut. As you can see, I'm not pushing hard into the blade. I'm letting the blade do the work. I'm not bending the blade by pushing on it too hard or too fast because all that does is cause you to break blades. You let the blade do the cutting and as you go on, you'll get the feel for that. I'm sure you'll probably break a few blades at first, but that always happens. Okay, so now we just need to come and do our intersection. It's going to be very like the first, very much like the first one we did. I'm going to line it up on the line and spin the wood and keeping the pressure of the wood on, on the back of the blade so that we get a nice sharp turn onto our line. Okay, that's the gist of that. That's the two basic cuts. And uh, you can work on line C and do it both ways. Try it 
the loop style on some of them and and the regular holding the blade to the back of the wood while you turn. I backed the camera up a little bit so that you can see my hands on curves because curves are a little bit different. You need to have your non-dominant hand if you're left right-handed it's use your left hand to be kind of a pivot point as you're steering with your right hand. The pivot point isn't solid. It has to float with the project because it's not going to be in one spot all the time but you want to have a decent little bit of pressure there to keep it from wiggling. So here we go, here's a start of a curve. Okay, I'll, just, I'll keep one finger there so you can see it. Whoops. Came off the line a little bit, but I just backed right into it. And just follow the line and move your pivot point as you need to, steering with your right hand or left hand if that's your dominant take your time there's no hurry with scroll sawing you can move your pivot point as you need to you know there's a lot of people out there that do videos that look like they're going really fast and everything and you know as a beginner you want to get good at it and be like them and be real fast and everything but first of all, it's not necessary to go fast. It's not a race. And second of all, you got to realize these people have been doing it for years. They've got a lot of experience under their belts. So as a beginner, don't be intimidated by what looks like these people making perfect cuts and going really fast. After you do it a few years, you'll be doing the same thing. So anyway, that's enough of that. You can finish the cutout. There's basically nothing to it. It's just take your time, stay on the line. Don't push too hard. Uh, that's that's the thing that's going to screw you up the most is pushing too hard. I'm going to cut the spiral out, or at least part of it, so you guys can see. It's actually uh, a little bit more difficult than it actually looks. You're constantly moving the wood, steering the wood onto your line doing your best to keep the blade on the line don't get frustrated if you have problems just slowly come back into the line it's it's kind of a actual difficult little item to cut so let's get to it and i'll explain a few things as we're going first thing make sure your blade is tensioned properly get in the habit of doing that hear that that's good to go so here we go I'm just constantly steering, watching my line very closely, going nice and slow. I'm not in a hurry. What's more important is staying on the line. I don't care about speed. However long it takes me to finish this is what it takes to finish it. I'm not trying to impress anybody. So just take your time, stay on the line constantly steering your piece of wood into the blade. When you get to this point where you've cut the wood out here and all the way around here, it becomes weak here. So from here on out, this is going to vibrate, which is going to make this cut even more difficult. So what we want to do is we want to keep a finger, even two possibly, on this loose piece of wood first of all it's more fragile and if this was a smaller piece it could easily break if you're doing a a very small piece of fret work so you want to hold it down as you're cutting it to prevent it from breaking you're still moving your pivot points not pressing real hard, just firmly enough to, to keep the wood from jumping. Still staying on the line, constantly spinning very slowly. As you can see, if I take my finger off now, well, you might not be able to see it, but 
all of a sudden the wood starts spinning, starts jumping. So we just keep moving in. I've got my blade speed set up about three quarter speed. Doesn't need to be any higher than that. The faster your blade goes up and down, the harder it is to control, especially on cuts like this. Okay, now at that point we can do two things. We can either back it up like this and go all the way back out or simply take loosen the blade up and take the blade out, which is my preferred method. Okay, now on to the circles. The way I like to start a circle is if I drill a hole, as you can see here, the hole's a little bit above the line. I do that on purpose because I don't want the hole to be directly on the line. I want to nibble a blade slot for my blade to fit in so that I can turn it and get it started on the circle and it's perfectly flat. So this is how I do that. I just come up to the line and nibble up nibble out a little bit all right up to the line. Now I've got a nice little spot so that when I turn my blade or turn the piece of wood my blade is starting right on the line of the circle and then we just go ahead and you know the drill by now I'm not going to show you the whole circle but you can just cut the rest of the circle out stay on the line take your time and uh don't be in a hurry and you'll get a quality piece of uh, you'll get a quality cut out of it okay I got the little circle cut out uh, the big circle is the same thing I have the hole cut off a little bit off of the line so I'm going to do the same thing again just to show you one more time just going to nibble just to the back side of the, the line just to give me enough room to be able to get the blade to fit in there. Probably could have done a little bit more. And then just stay on your line. As long as you stay on your line, you're going to have a perfect circle. If you wiggle off the line, the circle's not going to look so good. So with geometric shapes like circles, squares, triangles, etc., you really need to be on your line on those because the eye will pick up any deviation and it just won't look right. So on geometric patterns it's really important that you stay on your line. Okay now it's time to hit the final exam. There's a couple things I want to show you that I haven't covered yet so that you can actually do this properly. Uh, let me just start by I already cut a line here this V here is sharper than 90 degrees so it's a little bit different to handle what I want to show you is in order to make this a perfect V we just come back spin it around 100 spin the blade around 180 degrees then you come back in and you can attack the line follow the line straight and now this is the other uh, this is the other item I want to show you. This is called a veining line. It's typically used for highlights and portraits and fretwork type of uh, scroll saw cutting. So in order to come into that line, what we're going to do is we're just going to bypass it. We're going to go right past it. We get to the top and we're going to make a loop just a quick little sharp loop now with the loop we can go down this line but in this instance we're going to come back and come back into the veining line do a quick little cut on our veining line Now we can come back up to our loop and continue on. Okay, we're going into another sharper than 90 degree 
angle here so we just bring the blade back a little bit give it a 180 degree turn okay go back and attack our line with cutting like this sometimes you don't need this piece if you don't need this piece get it out of the way you know all it does is sit there and vibrate and cause more problems so don't be afraid to cut it off and get rid of it and that way you can also see how well you did on your cuts see these are perfect V's there's no overrun there's no rounding which makes your work look much better more professional we've got another very sharp turn here so I'm just going to come in here real quick and show you it's the same thing as the the same process as the two we just did I'm going to take a shortcut and cut in here just come down our line stop at the very bottom of the line back it up into the waist area turn 180 degrees bring the back of the blade into the bottom of the the slot and then go in and whoops hopefully you'll do it better than that go in and make your cut get rid of this piece if you want to you don't have to but that's not hard to do okay so that should be everything you need to know about finishing cutting the final exam out line F if you can cut this final exam out line F without any problems and it looks good and you got nice sharp turns and nice pretty little curves then uh, you can feel pretty comfortable with your cutting ability and probably don't need to do this much more other than maybe uh, refresh once in a while and speaking of refreshing on some scroll saw projects that you'll be doing you'll probably want to spend a little bit of extra money on some decent wood like you know curly maple or walnut or purple heart and you really don't want to screw those up just go ahead and print out a copy of this practice guide and slap it on a piece of scrap wood practice for a couple minutes before you start cutting on the expensive wood because believe me you don't really want to be throwing that stuff away because you screwed up well anyway I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please uh, like it if you have any comments leave them below or if you really feel the need to go ahead and email me at bob.uwt at gmail.com and uh, I look forward to hearing from you and as always happy scrolling <laughs>